I think we just stepped off the London tourist trail. I guess this Hobbes character doesn't like visitors. Not the kind of place you'd expect to find a restorer of old masters. Unless you didn't want to attract attention. He's attracted ours. Let's see what Mr. Hobbes knows about La Maledicio. And let's try and get a look inside that portfolio. The door was locked. Looking through the window, I could see that there was nothing in the van. Hobbes must have taken the portfolio inside. I don't think there's anyone home. There's a light on upstairs. It was Hobbes' mailbox. There was a note hanging out. For a second, I debated the morality of mail snooping. It was a short debate, and I won. I decided to open the letter. Dear Mr. Hobbs, due to previous incidents, we are writing to inform you that we will no longer be sending models to your address. It went on to discuss Hobbs's temper and other alleged infractions, some of which still carry the death sentence in certain less sophisticated cultures. Interesting. This could come in useful. Not a sound. The horn wasn't working. Slasha! I decided to leave the handbrake alone. I popped open the van's hood. The engine was held together by rust and dirt. Everything was covered in a sticky film of dirty black oil. Half the wiring wasn't connected to anything. It was clear why the horn hadn't made a noise. Neither horn pipe was connected to either the battery or the cab. The large dumpster was full of garbage. The large dumpster was full of garbage. Piles of junk, mostly boxes of old paints and scraps of picture frames. Mixed in were wires, cardboard, and some dubious looking old clothes. George Stobart. Ah, Monsieur Stobart. I trust you have obeyed my instructions not to leave Paris. Of course, Inspector. Good. You clearly know which side your cookie is buttered. Now, I require your presence tomorrow at the murder scene for a reconstruction. I see. Twelve o'clock sharp, Monsieur. Or, as you would say, high noon. Uh, sure. Any failure to comply, and I shall have you extraordinarily rendered. Have a nice day now. And you. That was Nave. We're required back at the gallery tomorrow for a crime scene reconstruction. Let me guess. Non-attendance is a criminal offense? You got it.
I had found just what I needed. Two lengths of wire. The engine bay was a mess. It was the van's engine. I didn't really have any reason to sabotage it. It was one of two horns in the van. It didn't seem to be connected to anything else under the hood. Two wires hung loose from it. A bundle of wires came into the engine bay from the dashboard. Many of the wires seemed to lead nowhere. It was the van battery. I needed to hook this up to the horn somehow. I snipped the wire in half. The wire was just long enough to connect the battery to the horn. I connected the wires from the cab to the horn. Everything was wired up. The horn had power. I figured that should get Hobbs' attention. All right, hold your blooming horses. What are you up to with my van? Hello there. Uh, we fixed your horn. So I hear. Now what are you doing in my yard? Afternoon, Mr. Hobbs. We're from the model agency. About blooming time. I'm on a deadline. You better come up. About time you two showed up. Hello, Mr. Hobbs. I was just wondering if... Uh, 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 can it, Goldilocks? I don't have time for chit-chat. Just get undressed behind that screen. Undressed? That was the deal. An extra 20 quid, because I need you with your kit off. The studio was freezing. And as for you, darling, no need to get undressed. I've got a vivid imagination, so I'll just use that. Either way, just go sit over there on that rug and give me your best belly pock floozy. That's perfect. Just hold it there. Nico made for a good distraction. I just needed to figure out how to get a look inside that portfolio. I didn't want to play around with the negligee. Those days are long gone but I wondered who it did belong to. My, my, if it isn't George Stobart. Lady Piermont. Oh, my, you're... Naked, of course. As an artist's muse, one often finds oneself en pelotas. Now, George, don't be shy. Come here and give me a big hug. That day was the day the nightmares had begun. Trapped, smothered, choking on lavender. Uh, George, darling, pass me my robe. It's terribly cold in here. Oi, what are you doing with a blooming robe on? God help me, but you're supposed to be naked. I've got a deadline to meet. Well, you won't be meeting any deadlines with manners like that. And besides, it's freezing in here. Lady Piermont and I had met before. She was larger than life, in every way. Lady Piermont. Oh, George, be a darling and sort the heating out in here. I'll see what I can do.
I didn't need to sit. It was time for action. The fuse box was emitting a sinister buzzing sound. It should have been condemned years ago. Hey! Leave that dial alone. Sorry, but Lady Piermont is cold. I thought... Look, pal, I know it's brass monkeys in here, but the wiring in this building is ancient, and the fuse box won't take it. Her Majesty will just have to get used to chapel hat pegs. Lady Piermont, Mr. Hobbs won't let me turn up the heating. Well, we'll soon see about that. Oh, crumbs. If you do not adjust the heating, I shall refuse to cooperate. Lady Piermont, it's the circuits. They won't take the strain. You know what old buildings are like. In which case, I see no reason for this session to continue. Whoa, Lady Piermont, let's not be too hasty. I'm sure I can accommodate your needs. Good. Perhaps you can start by letting George here turn up the heating. Oh, oh go ahead then, but be careful. The power in here is uh, temperamental. I'd turned the thermostat up as far as it would go. I wondered if the suspicious wiring could be used to my advantage. A word if I may, Lady Piermont. For you, George, I'm all ears. How can I help? How did you come to be working with Mr. Hobbs? Wheresoever a bohemian needs a helping hand, George, mine is always at the ready. And what better way to help than to expose one's flesh to the sensuous brushstrokes of such a talent? So what have you been up to since our last encounter, Lady Piermont? Charity work, dear boy. Oh, any particular kind? Young men, George. So many have lost their way. I try to guide them best I can. Can you keep a secret, Lady Piermont? I am the very soul of discretion, as you know. You see that portfolio by Hobbs's table? We need to take a peek inside. Be still, my beating heart. Just give me the nod and I'm putty in your hands. That's all for now. Wow, an old Boffson Wang stereo. I hadn't seen one of those for years. Hobbs seemed to have a thing for 70s psychedelic jams. I turned the volume up a few notches. I turned the volume down again. I turned the volume up a few notches. It was a shaky old elevator that would once have lifted goods between the floors. Oh, you! Get down from there! You'll trip the power in the whole building if you're not careful! Blowing the power would certainly have distracted Hobbs. But the elevator alone wasn't going to trip the whole system.
A word if I may, Lady Piermont. For you, George, I'm all ears. How can I help? Do you know anything about a stolen painting called La Maledicio? Oh, oh, is this another of your adventures, George? <laughs> How delicious. Shh. My heart's a tremor, George. Do you think Wilf is mixed up with this? Maybe, but I need you to act normally until we're sure. Mum's the word, Georgie. Lady Piermont, we need your help. How thrilling! What do you need? Subterfuge? Pleasure domain? Um, actually, I just need you to step onto that lift behind you. Oh, but of course. Is this good, George, darling? Perfect. Now, just stay right there. This is going to be one of those days. Damn it! Out of booze! How about a top up, Mr. Hobbs? Oh, don't mind if I do. There we go. Now, back to work. This is going to be one of those days. A straw had broken the camel's back. Hobbs was very drunk. Now was my chance. Hobbs was good, but no way was he going to sketch me in the nude. More of Hobbs' sketches. The model looked familiar. Impressionist sketches. Well, it wasn't La Maledicio, but it did appear to be a study for an element of the painting, the Ouroboros. There was something different about the image in the center. I figured the sketch might come in handy, so I took it. What the heck? I told you that portfolio was private. Huh? Well, that was fun. Just like when you were a private dick, George. So, you're not models? No, Mr. Hobbs. Well, you can't be a copper. You're not stupid enough. So what the blazes are you doing in my studio? We're investigating the theft of a painting 
La Melodixio by the Spanish artist El Serp? One of these sketches is a study of that painting. Well, sure, but what's that got to do with that? I'm a restorer, and I restored it. I've got nothing to do with what happened after that painting left this studio. How was I to know it was going to get Henri killed? Hang on a second. How do you know Henri's dead? Look, he and I went back a long way. Le Lézard Bleu was on the rope, so I got the painting into his exhibition. Nothing like this was supposed to happen. But something did happen, Hobbs. Your friend lost his life. Look, I'll help you however I can, but this mess is way above my pay grade. What do you want to know? How come you needed to make so many sketches of the painting to restore it? Restoration is not about throwing a lot of paint around. It, it takes research. The surf is a complicated painting. A lot of subtext. A lot of symbols. Why would anyone want to steal La Maledizio? It's not exactly a famous painting. True. But there is something special about it that's hard to describe. There's conviction in every brushstroke. Whoever El Serp was, he had a tale to tell. The symbolism is deeply religious. Tell me about the symbols in La Maledizio. Very Christian, deeply religious, but not exactly orthodox. The sort of thing that would upset a priest? There was one at the gallery telling everyone how evil it was. As I said, it's not exactly orthodox. And the church can be very touchy about orthodoxy. Especially now they can't just burn anyone they disagree with. We have reason to believe that Madovsky is mixed up in the theft of La Melodexio. Eh? <laughs> what would he gain from stealing his own painting? We have strong evidence that Madovsky is not the real owner. He'll have a hard time proving that. Medovsky has a full set of provenances for the painting. It traces its legitimate ownership all the way back to the painter. Why didn't Medovsky mention them? Because they're not with him. Henri's got them. Or had them. And Henri is dead. So ask his partner. Lane? Lane, yeah, Lane. Look, pal, you're wasting your time looking for conspiracies here. And you're wasting my time if you're not actually going to get naked. Go get the provenance from Lane, and everything will turn out hunky-dory. But it also puts Marquez's story into question. Not my problem, darling. Now both of you, get lost. I've got a painting to finish. And we have a critic to interrogate. Someone's lying, but who? Is it the gangster or the old Spaniard? The painter or the art critic? I need to head back for Nave's reconstruction. What about the evidence from Medovsky's house? Will you give it to Nave? I think I should. And I can put the squeeze on Lane. Ask him about the provenance. Good. I've got lunch with Ronnie tomorrow. This story is hurting up, and I want to make sure he keeps me on it. Taxi! <laughs> 